So we open and everybody going out to dinner. They get in the car and Aaron says to Jenna, it's just like flying in coach. Somebody wants to be over here. Bronx said, it's Housewives of New York. I have to be present as one of the boroughs. He's starting to realize he's running things around here. And he peed on the pad. I hit a pad where he likes to sneak and pee. So it's like, oh no, I'm going to get you. We're going to get you on these pads. On TikTok, somebody reminded me, Jenna was the president of J. Crew. She's used to flying private and business class. So, you know, she ain't a coach girl like the rest of y'all. I am with Cy on this vacation. Food, beach time, food, rest, food. Uber said, look, don't you be believing what they show about Africa on TV. We ain't a bunch of malnourished children. We're paradise. I've seen some of them houses people build in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Larger bedrooms, open concept luxury, and pools. We know how to swim. And that's coming from Alexander Heated Pool Rogers. But Jessel's admiring Jenna's dress, and Jenna says, oh, sure, you can borrow it. And Jessel says, we can do a dress swap. Not a wife swap, but a dress swap. And Bryn's like, don't even. Well, Bryn, everybody gonna take kindly to you flirting with their man. I mean, Jessel, you ain't got nothing to worry about because she doesn't have a penis, so your man won't be interested. I cuddled with you all night. We slept right next to each other. I, I just got up. Do I get any space, or is it just this is it? Do you have separation anxiety? You just ain't ready to get up, really. You still want to cuddle in the bed. I do, too, but, honey, I got to pay for you. So Ubergon stirred the turret a little bit, finally. And she asked Sai, would you be upset if she made that comment about David? So Sai and Jessel are on Bryn's side, and they're like, oh, we don't want to talk about it. Don't even ask. And Uba's like, look. I'm just on the married woman side. I ain't on Aaron's side specifically, but you don't be flirting with nobody's husband like that. It was in poor taste. The thing is, you can be a flirt, but you ain't got to be a flirt with married men. I'm a flirt too, but not with nobody in a couple. So now Brynn apologizes for saying her party was boring. Girl, it was. All them dry speeches with drier food. Pigs in a blanket? I mean, that's great for a tailgate, but not for a vowel renewal downtown in upscale Manhattan. Pigs in a blanket. You know that puff pastry was dry and not even Costco quality. Associated foods. They trying to be all fancy schmancy, but they got that food from Western Beef. If you know, you know. Now Western Beef is cute for catering a cheap party, getting some, you know, groceries for the kids. But if you're trying to have something fancy and free, you going to a Cinderella. You're going to a fairway. But uh, come on now, girl. Come on. Wasn't one egg and caviar in the place. Not one egg. Oh, God. Now Bryn is saying, I never cheated. I never flirted with anyone's husband. You may not have meant anything by your flirting, but you, you were talking about, oh, you're not married. So when you're done with her, you can be with me. That's flirting. That's That's flirting. Aaron's like, look, I want you to apologize for the wife swap and divorce comments you made at my vow renewal. And she's like, okay, yeah, I, I, that was inappropriate. That was inappropriate. And Jessel comes to her defense. We were all laughing. He was laughing. Yeah, girl, ha ha, he he to the bed. You just can say that because don't nobody want your gay husband. Uber said, I'm sorry if I call foul. If somebody said that to your husband with a penis, you'd be really upset. But now Bryn wants an apology. Um, nobody said that they were trying to take your man. Oh, is that Uber in that Lexus commercial? Nobody said you were trying to take her man. What you were accused of was is what you just apologized for. The comments were inappropriate. Why is she apologizing to you for saying, I didn't like the comments, they were inappropriate? Meanwhile, Cy puts her order in. She's like, I like the snapper. So I was like, I have to eat. Wrap it up, girl. Uba's like, well, I'll get the salmon. See, Aaron's still trying to have this conversation. We're going to have a conversation. Everyone's like, we're going to order. Y'all can talk after. The lack of respect that they have for Aaron. They, they do not respect her. They do not care. 
And it's beautifully obvious. They're having none of it. Like, Aaron really thinks she's the queen bee and, like, no one is falling in line. Aaron's, like, literally watching her moment evaporate. And the thing is, like, it's over. It's over. You two need to have a one-on-one -on -one about this. Really hash it out. Aaron, you were hurt. Bryn, that was stupid. I wouldn't make no joke about that. I always tell my friends, I want to see y'all happy and together, but I don't want to see anybody in an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> Bryn said, okay, Sai, allow us to talk. You don't have to referee. Sai's so like, okay, but I'm over it. Sai so said, I'm producing. Aaron said, you didn't mean it malicious. Y'all gonna squash it and move on. Don't nobody want your man but you, Aaron. Don't nobody want him but you. He looks like he has a ricket too, but then again, you just ain't feeding that one. I want to make him a sandwich, hell. I don't want to sleep with him, but I don't like to see nobody looking hungry. Oh, Lord. Now Brent asking Jenna, well, who doesn't prefer business over coach? So now we're going to be mean girls to Jenna because she didn't get on the deck. Who cares? You're here now. You're eating. Oh, Lord. Jenna getting pissy. You really believe that? You really? I do. We know. Genetic disorder. We know. We know you need a tan. Here's the thing. Let them not believe. Let them have their attitude. I would say, you know what? What's done is done. I'm sorry y'all feel that way. Next time, I will get a PJ so we can travel in style since you girls have no standards. And I will not apologize for that statement because it's simply the truth. Now, are we going to enjoy our meal or are you going to continue to bitch and moan because I am going to disengage? Oh, Jenna's like, look, blame it on the drugs. I was post-op from anesthesia. Oh, God. Bryn said you give us gifts instead of, like, connecting. Oh, God. Bryn whining. and others changes know your real name, and I have to hear it from Cy. Jenna's what you gonna call her. Why do you need to know her, her full government? You could look at her and tell, oh, that's a Judith Elizabeth. So everybody kind of going in on Jenna for not telling all her business. The woman was outed. The woman was outed. I could not imagine getting a call from page six. Putting all your business in the street. Your lesbian business. So I think she's always going to be a bit hesitant to tell all. And honestly, if it ain't about food, don't none of y'all really care. Bring on say, well, I cried and shook in front of you and you didn't give me a real name. I wanted your Judith Elizabeth. But was she there and supportive for you as a friend? Did she help wipe your tears? Did she have to tell you your real name, too? Or is Judith Elizabeth the only thing that would console you? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, now, this was some of the best production ever. Ever. So, Judith is like, those... I'm gonna start calling her Judith now. We got too many freaking J names. Jessel, Judith, Jenna, Jimpsom Weed. This show better provide some succor. But we go back to when Bryn was opening up about her upbringing and they just kind of, and they sandwiched the audio in of Judith saying, oh, my real name isn't Jenna. Uh, and, it, and you know what? It showed how selfish and self-centered it would be in a moment like that. And so what Jenna was doing was something that she was taught as a corporate president in how to ease somebody into something versus opening up and telling your business when the moment is really about your friend. Erin takes up for it and she's like, you know, you opened up in, my, in your apartment, but it just takes you longer. You're more guarded. And she said, yes, if I seem like I don't want to participate or be a friend, that's not what it is. I've just really been hurt. I could not imagine page six with my business. Y'all have is stressing poor Jenna out, demanding her Judith Elizabeth. So Jenna opens up about her mom and some of her other issues. She's just had it rough. After that, Jessel says, you know, I was actually raised in Kenya. Oh, God. Jessel, this was not a you moment to talk about your family and sleeping on... Pre Don't nobody care. Your year of interning was brutal packing boxes, Jessel. Ooh, you are so out of touch. That's why your husband won't touch you. And actually, I grew up with nothing. And I'm not catered to. And Aaron said, you don't think you're catered to by your mom at all? And also, what's your definition of nothing? Then we cut to Jessel ordering her family around who does cater to her. 
But Heffa, you ain't giving me no slumdog millionaire. Did your mama have to work? I don't even think your mama had to work. Bye. We in the car talking about the flight over. And Suba said, TSA was asking me what I had. And I said, I had this WAP. And Aaron doesn't get it. And it's like, what's WAP? My wet ass. My ass is wet. Either Aaron has been having dry pussy sex her whole life and don't understand how vaginas work. Or she doesn't understand that in African-American vernacular, ass is a suffix. Head ass. Dead ass. Trifling ass. You can put ass as a suffix on anything. Dumb ass. Cheap ass. I mean, she just doesn't get it. So the next morning, Jessel and Uber are talking about how Bryn either overdoes it or underdoes it. So everybody's on the good foot. We have a breakfast where Sai opens up about some of her troubles growing up and didn't really have a close family. Her mom was an alcoholic. Jenna talks about her family not really being good either. But it's nice. We all opening up, getting to know each other before we go out drinking for the day. So now Aaron wants to get Jessel drunk to get her to send some pictures to her gay husband. Bryn's trying to get everybody to tan they puss. So we go to the beach, they have a photo shoot, everybody doing okay. After that, we head to lunch. Okay, Jenna, I am really sorry that you have the disorder and you don't want to be, you know, in the beach on camera. Go to the beach at night when ain't nobody looking. Go with your friends at night when they won't care. But it's getting a little too woe is me at it. But all talk turns to Bren's dating life and she was doing three dates a day. But then we get to talk about freezing our eggs versus embryos. And Bren's telling her experience. Aaron's like, that doesn't happen. Uber said that didn't happen to me. I'm not going to disbelieve. If she said that's what happened, that's what happened. Why go on a crusade? Aaron said, that's a weird lie. And I'm a girl's girl. And I have so many girlfriends. And I know all about embryo and vito and vitro. All right, Jessica Fletcher. Let's see you suss this out. Bryn's like, that's messed up. Why would I lie about that? I'm telling you about it because I thought it was abnormal. Wait, now she's sensitive, Aaron, because you called her a liar. Bryn's right. Y'all just made up hours ago. This ain't the time for a dig. So Aaron goes on and apologizes on the car ride home for using the word lie. When she meant to say, embellish. Like it's a rob the throb. Dixon cap. So Bryn's gonna stay home tonight because she's pooped. But she told Sai, so hopefully the group ain't gonna act the ass about it. Then Bryn goes and tells Aaron, hey, I'm tired. I'm taking a time out. I'm not gonna go to dinner. And she said, I just want you to know I ain't mad at you. You ain't mad at me. We on the good foot. Let's squash it before it starts. I, I like this. I like it. Oh, God. Now Aaron's all up Bryn's ass. I I'm sick of them fighting and fucking. But Aaron realized she did touch a nerve kind of going after the eggs thing. But she still wasn't as harsh as Dr. Jackie with, you infertile. You traumatized Buffy off TV with that. And I mean, of all the things to say, you infertile. That, that was cruel, Jackie. That was cruel. That's why you don't tell certain people shit. Then before you know it, they ain't giving a damn speech. And you're infertile. Oh, God. Aaron's gonna be George Washington and Bri And Brent says, you kind of look like him. Now that, that's shade. Because you just laughing like she didn't say you looked like George Washington. And you do. I mean, you have that, like, old white man face about you. Like... Like your own slaves. You have that look about you. I mean, you look a bit malnourished and gaunt. So I can, I can see you having that look of that era. I mean, we've seen your political contribution, so you're still about the era of hate and ignorance. Well, that was the shit, and I mean shit.